You know, one of the things I wanted to come back and talk about is the ability to appreciate the person you're married to. Sometimes we don't get what we may, you know, a lot of people told me I wouldn't marry a blind person or I wouldn't, but see, I saw the man in him before I got married. I had been seeing that all through, all down through the years because we all went to the same church together. So when he went blind, I didn't see him as a blind man. You hear what I'm saying? There are times when you're married to a person you actually, if you're having a hard time recognizing or appreciating the strengths, take a little moment and ask God to open your eyes to it. Because when God gives you the vision, you see a lot more when you look through God's eyes than you do when you look through your own. You hear what I'm saying? When you look through your own, because we are human, we are flawed, we have issues. And we oftentimes filter what we get from that other person. We filter it through or funnel it through our own insecurities, our own fears. Do you hear what I mean? And that's why some women or some men are jealous. You're jealous of each other. You've got fear. That fear comes from an, a trust issue. That trust issue comes from a scar that needs to be healed. Before, when I dated Milton, compared to when I was married to him, I went through a lot of healing in between that, that time. We were separated for about nine months because I was, or 10 months because I was concentrating on me. I began to realize I wasn't ready to be married or in a relationship with anyone because I needed an overhaul. So I went to God and I continually went to inner healing services. When Milton and I got back together as a couple, getting ready to get married now, I noticed that the things that twitched me and pinched me and itched me and hurt me, they didn't bother me anymore. So when you, and we had a healthy marriage as a result, when you as a couple have so many issues. You got looks and you got glances and you got attitude and, and body language. And, and you know when you don't want to be around somebody because they're, they're, uh, they're not quite a happy camper. And you don't want to be around that snide remark or that sharp, double-edged tongue. Both of y'all need some healing. You can't get it from each other. You have to get that kind of healing from God because with, with too much damage, you end up doing more damage based on your own damage. It sounds redundant, but hurting people hurt people. And if you haven't dealt with those old issues, y'all need to, to bathe that stuff in prayer and ask God to heal. Because if you're not healed, you're going to hurt. I'm telling you, you're going to hurt. And I want to say this. This is, this is my, I guess it's kind of a legacy or it's a tribute to a good husband, a mature husband, a real man. My husband made me feel like a woman. I never had anybody make me feel like a woman like my husband, Milton. He made me feel like a woman, a desired woman, a loved woman, an admired woman, totally accepted in both my flaws and imperfections and the things he liked and loved about me. He trusted my judgment. He trusted me. Even when I made a big mess, he would say, well, baby, we live and learn. That would be the end of it. How many of you men can do that with your wives? Hello? How many of you wives do that with your husband? Or do they have to listen to a litany 
of failures that you never let them forget. Love covers a multitude of sin. It doesn't put it out on the front page. It doesn't walk around on and talk on the cell phone to the buddies, telling them about how much we hate our spouses, what we hate about them, what they did, and what they said, and how they acted, and how they looked. That's nobody else's business. That's between you and God, the two of you and God. Because when you get through running your mouth about what you don't like about the person you chose to marry, you made those vows and committed before God, those people will never forget that stuff. You'll forgive them and move on, and they'll be looking at them out the side of their eye, or looking at her out the corner of their eye, and whizzy whizzy into each other. You know what he told me about her? Mm. And they're still together? No. Mm. You know, you don't need people in your business, and you sure don't need your family in your business. Now, let's go on the other side. You men that want to keep your wives away from the family. Unless they're busybody, nosy, and really pulling your, your marriage apart, don't you dare try to get between your wife and her family. If you're that insecure, you need to go to God. Because you got fear issues, baby. You're too insecure. You shouldn't have gotten married in the first place. You got that Napoleon attitude. Little man, big authority. You're going to boss everybody around. You got to be in control because you're the little man. You see yourself as a little. I don't care if you're six foot five. If you see yourself as a little man, guess what? You're going to be hell to live with, baby. And you deserve for your wife to take a vacation from you. And if you laying hands on her, I pray to God, somebody lay hands on you to show you just what it feels like. Because it's not fair. It's just not fair. If you can't open your mouth and articulate what your issue is without being nasty and mean and degrading and cruel, you need to go and live by yourself, baby. You do not need anybody right now. The only thing you need is God because you need a whole lot of fixing and reconstruction in here and in here. Anyway, I'm not going to lecture. I just want to let you know from a woman who had a phenomenally phenomenal man. Read your Bible. Find out, watch how Jesus treated women. Watch how Jesus treated men and treat each other likewise, okay? Jesus never hit a woman, okay? And Jesus never knocked a man's lights out. He never came out from a bar drunk, brawling and starting fights. Do what Jesus would do. Love the way God loves. If you can't do that, take a break from relationships for a while till you get yourself together. Because it's going to take Superman to do that. And Superman spelled capital G-O-D. That's the one you need right now. So that when you do get together, you can reconcile and truly love. And let me just say this one last thing. In a marriage... If God's spirit is controlling your marriage, then this will be the bottom line of your relationship. Whether you're on top of your game or not so much. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. My husband and I had liberty with each other. We were free with each other and we freed each other to be ourselves, to be the individuals we were. We didn't have to walk on eggshells to be together. We were free. God bless you.